Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence. I'm Francis McCarthy, and it's a redo I'm bringing you today. It's called Storm Above the Meadow, and I want to point out to you that little area with these trees on the uh, on our right. You can see the sky coming through. Man, I struggled with that, and uh, I really struggled with it, and failed. And um, now this is one of these cases where uh, the reality was, uh, you know, uh, in in the actual scene that that was occurring, and in my photo that was occurring. But um, what I tried to pull off just wasn't working, and uh, I struggled and struggled. And for a long time, I would look at this painting. I actually had it in my office here, and there's so many things I liked about it, but. Um, not that and so you're looking at my solution to that problem and um, I think it ended up, ended up working pretty well um, and I haven't actually sold the redo but I've had a lot of people interested in it and which was indicative to me that I managed to succeed and um, it's an interesting scene it's sort of a typical Northland uh, type scene we have a lot of roads here and uh, people drive on them and um, yeah, I probably uh, took the original photo through the front glass of the uh, the car as my wife was driving. I tend to do that when we go out on trips. Sometimes I get some really good shots that way. So, and you know, you would think that the uh, the uh, the glass from the windshield would be a big impediment or interference, but not really. Especially since I'm not trying to uh, take an award-winning photo. What I'm trying to do is. Uh, take a photo that will serve as some sort of reference or um, structure for a painting and uh, I've done that quite a lot actually and it does work out. It's a little tip for you there if you've got a wife or partner who can do the driving just you know and you're out in the countryside you know have that camera ready take that shot. In fact sometimes you know these uh, modern cameras are so quick you can take multiple shots click 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 like that and um, it works out good. So, uh, sorry, uh, I meant to uh, do this video yesterday, but um, my neighbor was very, very busy uh, mowing their lawn, and then when I thought that stopped and I could get into the video, they decided to get the weed eater out, and uh, so it just didn't happen, and um, I apologize for that. I probably will put this up this evening. Today is uh, Friday here in New Zealand, Thursday there in the States, and... Um, I'm home for lunch right now. I'm in the studio. I have um, firmly um, started on my um, new Past Master series, and uh, so far so good. I had a bit of a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a struggle with the, I did an Alexander Helwig Wyant um, the first day I've settled into it. It isn't actually the first in the series, it's more like the third, but. Um, um, he had this very uh, expressionate. Uh, and um, interesting stormy kind of cloudy sky with bits of blue and um, I didn't mess up but what I was really like about this painting had almost a bit of a chiclet effect what I call the chiclet effect like little square pieces of gum he had a lot of little chiclets in that and uh, I just couldn't pull that off and cover all of the brown um, of my uh, underboard so uh, what I did was I got it pretty close and uh, definitely I feel that's one that will come alive in the second pass and that's often the case with the tonalism so many of the effects that they're pulling off are not things you're going to be able to do a la prima uh, it's dry brushing over a painting that's dry or it's glazing or uh, who knows it's just been taken for a ride and so some some of this stuff I have to do up in stages and um, I do try as a general rule to get most of it done a la prima all in one go but if it doesn't work out I don't worry about it I can keep pecking away at it and uh, it's great I've just really been having fun and uh, when I get back in the studio this afternoon I'm going after this Georgian S which is really the simplest little painting you ever saw it's just like mm, two-thirds of the painting is just uh, uh, this one tree and a bit of grass and then the sky is just, you know, texture, really. It's more than anything. It's just fractured bits of gray and taupe. And uh, I can tell that I'm going to have to do 
a lot of uh, to get a lot of that down I'm gonna have to go in with dry brushing and glazing and things like that as well it would be impossible to do it a la prima um, well, I'm gonna give it a solid go though I always try and it's not so much like when I'm trying to do this that um, make a make a good study that I go well I can't get that effect you know I try to get the effect and I don't I don't actually intentionally paint lighter say which is always a good idea if you're gonna glaze by the way because glazing uh, almost always will darken the painting and um, but you can glaze and then paint up the light areas that was something Ines would do a lot of and it's something that I tend to do quite a lot as well um, so you know now I am planning on doing a glazing video coming up I've had requests um, the thing is I'm gonna have to um, uh, have my wife come in and film that and she's busy working on her uh, master's thesis right now so kind of hard to interrupt her but uh, we'll see it won't take that long uh, but I need someone that can move the camera from the palette up to the easel and um, yeah so anyway hey we're getting close to the end here thanks for joining me today new subscribers you are awesome and old subscribers I love you even more because you've been with me for a while and you stick around thank you so much for that and I'll be back real soon with another video probably the next one will be a past masters video so come back for that and uh, meanwhile please take good care and stay out of trouble.